I was like traveling through Costa Rica for like a month and I met this solo female traveler. This woman that I met, we we had spent a day together, we became really close friends. We uh, said our goodbyes and went our separate ways. The next day, that woman was murdered. She was sexually assaulted and murdered in a beach. A person I had just met the day before, a person that I had just shared like our mutual experience as solo travelers. What up? It's Dramos, and this is the recap, of course, as I do each and every week, breaking down some of the biggest headlines from this last week. Uh, now, let's quickly address the elephant in the room. We are here once again in a new set. Uh, hopefully, this will be the permanent set moving forward. Still working out the kinks, so bear with me, but um, we're no longer in my mom's basement. So, yeah, moving up in the world. Now, when it comes to this week's show, I'm really excited about this week's guest. He is in... Uh, uh, artist overall, a photographer. More importantly, though, he is also a huge mental health advocate. Fernando Samalot will be hopping on in just a little bit. And we'll be tackling some of the headlines from these last week and a little bit further back uh, from a mental health standpoint, which is always incredibly important. Before he hops on, though, man, let's um let's get into the BS from this last week. Now, over the last couple weeks, there have been a, a lot of back and forth over Major League Baseball. Uh, deciding to move this year's All-Star game out of Atlanta in protest of these new voter laws that were signed by Georgia Governor Kemp. Now, these new voting laws, they basically make it harder for people to vote and essentially prove the fact that instead of, you know, actually trying to be good at their jobs and, and you know, dare I say, even winning people over with their policy, Republicans are saying, hey, we would just much rather, you know, suppress your, your right to vote. That's it, right? Easy enough. Now, back to my, my actual focus today, because I could talk about that for like a four-part episode. But I, I want to focus today uh, on the response to Major League Baseball's decision to pull out of the All-Star game uh, being held in the city of Atlanta. Now, of course, when all this broke and, and as the weeks have gone on, uh, all of your favorite, you know, fear mongering, usual suspects, they're uh, they're out in full force over this, uh, including our buddy, old no neck, Mitch McConnell, who said this. So my warning, if you will, to corporate America is to stay out of politics. Now, while there's generally not much that I would ever agree with uh, our buddy Mitchie on, I got to admit, I have to respect the hell out of anyone who has the guts to stand up to corporate America. I mean, listen, we're talking a man who is saying that when it's campaign time and donations are needed, he's having the guts to say to corporate America, your money is no good here. I am a man of the people. I cannot be bought. I mean, this is a man who, well, hold on, I'm sorry. My, my producer in my ear with some, with some information. Okay. How much? You sure? Huh. Okay, well. This is embarrassing. I'm being told that actually in the last five years alone, our buddy Mitchie, he's, uh, he's received $4.3 million in corporate cash to fund his campaign. So I guess what, what Mitch was really trying to say was corporations should stay out of politics except for when they're cutting him a check because, of course, that's, that's perfectly fine when they're cutting a check, right? Now, what's scary is this is incredibly reminiscent of the whole shut up and dribble commentary that we heard not too long ago that was uh, in response to LeBron James's comments on our then president, Donald Trump. You remember. Oh, and LeBron and Kevin, you're great players, but no one voted for you. Millions elected Trump to be their coach. So keep the political commentary to yourself or as someone once said, shut up and dribble. Now, what people like No Neck Mitch McConnell or the poster child for too much Botox, Laura Ingram, now that's allegedly, of course, um, but I mean, the woman obviously like has trouble moving her upper lip. It just, I mean, it looks painful, but, but anyway, what I'm, what I'm getting at is the people like this keep trying to push this age old narrative that politics are only for a certain type of people. I mean, that we as, as citizens and taxpayers are, are not allowed 
to have an opinion on politics, you know? We're not allowed to have an opinion on what is going on in this country unless we maybe have a, a political science degree or have held office or maybe, you know, at the very bottom of that list, reaping the benefits of being an overpaid talking head on a news network, regurgitating whatever information is being fed to them, right? Those are the only people that are allowed to speak on politics and, and have an opinion. The reality is politics is something that is for all of us. These are things that affect our everyday lives, and we should have an opinion on them. I mean, LeBron James being a successful basketball player doesn't change the fact that he is first a man and an American who, like all of us, should have a say in what happens in this country. Now, the same goes for corporations who, unless they're uh, being run by, by robots somehow, some way, if technology has advanced that much, they have people working for them, and those people have a say in what happens in this country. Now, I guess the, the problem is that for far too long, we've been fed this whole lie, right? That, that the people in office, or even the, the people covering the news on TV for that matter, that they're so much smarter and, and more qualified than us, right? That that's why they get to have a, an opinion on politics, because they're so qualified to have this opinion. So intelligent, right? Now, I know some of you are probably sitting there thinking like, well, what the hell do you know about anything, right? And you're, you're probably right. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm just a DJ, right? I don't know anything about this stuff. It doesn't matter. I have a professional background. Therefore, I, I, I don't have, you know, the, the smarts or the credentials to talk about this stuff, right? Well, how about then we hear from somebody who I guess does have those credentials that you're looking for. Let's flash back to my conversation last week with, Representative Tom Sullivan out of Colorado, who's not a career politician, but is in office. And when was put in office, came to realize the same thing about his new co-workers. It's the Wizard of Oz. Just pull, pull the curtain and you see who's <laughs> behind there. It's sure. the exact same thing. I thought the same thing until you start to talk to them. And they're not geniuses. Mm -hmm. They're not even the sharpest pencil that's in the bunch. You see, the, the secret's out. And little by little, the face of politics, it's changing. And this scares the hell out of people like Mitch McConnell and Laura Ingram, because when they see as people like a, a bartender from the Bronx, like our queen, AOC, are out in these streets energizing a new generation to get involved and stand up for themselves, they know in their heart of hearts that all of this means that their time of taking advantage of the everyday person, <sighs> It's quickly coming to an end. Now, let's move on from, from the BS of this last week. Uh, I wish I could say I'm lightening up, but I, I think at least we're going to have a, a great education process when it comes to this week's conversation uh, with, with this week's guest. Now, last week, uh, I had Representative Tom Sullivan on the show, and we, we tackled the, the issues we've seen and the, the stories we were hearing about uh, that pertain to violence and, and gun violence in this country, and we talked about it from a lawmaker's point of view and a policy point of view. But I often feel like one of the other conversations that needs to be had, but unfortunately is often left out, is the topic of mental health, specifically mental health of men in this country who, statistically speaking, by large numbers, are more inclined to be the ones committing these acts of violence. So I wanted to bring on somebody who can uh, who could speak to all that we've seen from that angle. I think it's incredibly important. So. My guest this week is an incredible photographer, poet, and just all-around artist. I mean, but more importantly, he is a big, big activist uh, in the mental health space. He focuses primarily on men uh, and the topic of vulnerability. Fernando Samalon, how are we feeling? Hey, man, I'm feeling good. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to talking to you. Of course, man. As am I. I'm, I'm a little bit jealous, bro. You're, you're coming to us from Puerto Rico, so I'm a little bit... Uh, a little jealous. <laughs> I mean, we have a really rainy week, so at least, you know, it's not like the, the tropical postcard dream right, right. now. Right. <laughs> I'm going through a little withdrawals, man. I, I, I would have been in Puerto Rico probably two or three times by this point in the year mm. normally. So uh, I'm going through some withdrawals, but hopefully, you know, God will. Yeah. 
I hope you'll be able to come back soon. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Well, listen, I, I want to dive into some stuff, uh, you know, we've been seeing from this last week as well as the last couple of weeks and get your perspective of it specifically from kind of the mental health side of it. Uh, if that's cool with you. Yeah, of course. Cool. So, I mean, you know, these are these are heavy topics to, to discuss, but they're incredibly necessary ones. You know, I mean, as we're, we're seeing, you know, so many different acts of violence across this country. I mean, from, you know, the, the week before last, we saw... Uh, a, a guy drive a car into two police officers at the nation's capital. We've seen uh, another mass shooting in California that killed four people on an office building. And then, you know, one of the more tragic ones that I can remember was this last week where we had a murder suicide of two brothers and a, an entire family in Texas. Now, I, I'm not going to put you in a position where, you know, you're speaking to mass shootings or violence. And I know that's not your area of expertise, but mm -hmm. I think there definitely is a conversation to be had about men and, and, how most of these acts are coming from men. And, and it's probably obviously, man, uh, you know, a lot of anger and things that they're holding on to that's being put mm -hmm. into the wrong places. I mean, before I get your perspective, I do want to read a, a study I saw that said men accounted for 80.4% of persons arrested for violent crimes in this country. Mm -hmm. So that's an incredible statistic. And we're talking about obviously very damaged people. So, I mean, from your expertise your studies let's kind of start to unpack why you think men sort of tend to lean towards violence i mean at least the numbers say so yeah i mean i think especially now like living in these confined and complicated times like mm. the mental health of everyone has been like worse than ever right and then if you look at men in particular um we like throughout history you know uh the way we are raised, the way our environment is raising us, um, there's a huge disconnect between men and their emotions, right? There's mm. this op oppression that is happening to men uh, from the inside, you know? And I mean, and if you look at it from like a brother, a brother image, it's like the same um, systems that oppress women oppress men in a different way, you know? Mm. It's all the patriarchy in this way where um, women are oppressed uh, at a physical level in the way that like their their rights their liberties um um and men are oppressed from the same system but from the inside you know uh this disconnect and repression of our images especially of, of our emotions especially like coming from any kind of latino household sure. you know growing up like you are taught that like showing emotion is a sign of weakness you know, or what, what, what do you hear always? Like you see uh, a young boy crying and it's like, Hey, don't be a sissy man yeah. up. Oh, yeah. don't cry like a little girl. This whole like constant repression of your emotions. And then what do you think is going to happen when emotions aren't expressed or honored or observed? They mm -hmm. come out. They're like, they're explosive. Yeah. So like, I think it's, it's so crucial for us as men to create spaces of open vulnerability and communication which is really hard for us right because no one teaches us this stuff sure. like where are we where are our role models for this like mm -hmm. our parents didn't do it our grandparents didn't do it so like it definitely we need to show up in new ways for each other and right. you know it's funny because like women are definitely doing that work right you yeah. see women getting together you see women um, um fighting this oppression you see women gathering creating sisterhood support groups women's circles men really need to step it up too because like this we have so much work to do on our side so that mm. then we can come together and kind of bridge that gap right and i think that that that, that giant piece of like sitting with our emotions and learning to channel them in a way that isn't destructive is like so crucial to the development and like the general mental health of, of men it's interesting, man. It's you're you're touching on so many important points because there is this sort of like you said notion as men we grew up don't cry. You know, you sound like a girl, right? You know, all these different things that are like reinforcements that we are therefore lesser than. You know, mm -hmm. um, and also this idea of being the man, being the uh, you know protector, and all these things. There's also I feel like this sort of misconception that the protector always means physical strength when that's not necessarily mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the case. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like that's also an important thing for, for us to expound upon a little bit as well, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, I mean, I think um, that there's this like struggle going on inside us, right? For like, especially with men, 
because mm-hmm. like the whole power dynamic power struggle i grew up going to like an all boys all boys school so mm-hmm. i got to witness experience firsthand this whole power dynamic of like control dynamic like i'm the alpha male i'm bigger than you so i'm going to like make you feel smaller i'm going to impose upon you i'm going to use violence as a as a show of strength sure. to like overcome something you know and this is like thousands of years old men have been like fighting over stuff forever and being violent with each other and it's right. like what that's why i mean there's like this crucial piece missing that's like the what we associate with the feminine side which mm-hmm. is like emotional in touch with your emotions which is really part of being a balanced human sure. is that like uh, all of us have like male and female energy and it's all about kind of b- bridging that gap and bringing us together and kind of like becoming a full balanced um human on earth you know and yeah. um uh, i in my experience i've always wondered like where does this violence come from but it's not hard to see when like everything around us like promotes these systems of violence like the uh mass media consumption movies um um organized religions even mm-hmm. you know so like it's easy sure. to see that like the roots of all our upbringing even if it's straight or indirect is like packed with so much violence right. and unless, uh, until we get to that point where we can sit with each other as men and open up like yo i've been explosive i've like really been violent in my life i know that i've created a lot of suffering for myself and others this way right. like what even taking that first step of like showing up for yourself and mm-hmm. sitting with another man and having this conversation of being like damn i've really been horrible sometimes in my life and i am i know i don't want to be that way because right. i see the effect that it's creating i i know the suffering and darkness that comes from acting out of pure reactivity you know right and what what's almost interesting to me is the fact that it's like more acceptable to act out in violence than it is to actually share your feelings right it's like uh yeah, yeah. That, that's like the irony where it's like if you if i were to act out in violence in an angry moment get into a bar fight whatever the case may be that would be much more acceptable amongst my guy group of friends than to sit there and have a conversation with them about feeling depressed or feeling down about something you know yeah because it's very normalized to act from a reactive place Mm. It's like I heard something I didn't like, I get to react immediately. I'm it's like just again, it's just it's a it's a it's reacting from a place of total non-self-awareness, you know? It's right. just like running on programming. And if there's so much violence in my upbringing or suffering in my upbringing and someone like touches one of my buttons immediately, I'm just going to like lash out and shoot out. Sure. And I I but the thing is like, okay, yeah, I get it. I get it. But then what? like right. then what like there has to be a point in your life like either you're going to face the consequences of your acts directly that will force you to change mm-hmm. or by seeing it on the outside for example like i i got to experience firsthand through violence how i didn't want to be in the world you know mm-hmm. so like especially for us as men seeing acts of violence like perpetuated by men uh, towards anyone but especially also towards women because like men really act up as monsters and they show up as monsters right. seeing what do you things mean by like that, that specifically though I, if you wouldn't mind kind of expounding upon seeing it firsthand violence i experienced a lot of violence as a child growing up because mm. being in a male dominated environment sure. it was all about this like doggy dog alpha world gotcha. and it's like what what is anyone gaining from this you know right and then like but also like growing up going through so many experiences and i think it, um in talking about like our male experience and like our lack of vulnerability and connection and emotion control of our emotions it's really important to it's so directly related to our relationship with women too sure and like in my own life being close to women my whole life hearing all the stories of the women experience again kind of puts you in the place of like Oh my god that was done to you like i right. i never want to do that i never want to be that sure and like e- even more so like uh a few years ago i was like traveling through costa rica for like a month and i met this solo female traveler we were both like solo female solo travelers for the first time right and uh we met and we exchanged our experience like oh, wow like it's, i'm not i never have to look over my shoulder you know right. ever once when i'm walking around as a man like 
I never really have to fear for my life just because of what like what my gender is, right? Sure. And like this woman that I met, we we had spent a day together. We became really close friends. We uh, said our goodbyes and went our separate ways. The next day, that woman was murdered. She was sexually assaulted and murdered in a beach. A person I had just met the day before. A person that I had just shared mm. like our mutual experience as solo travelers. Right. And that moment in my life was such an eye-opening moment of like, mm. it was really hard because in particular, after that happened, uh, it was it made like international news. And I got like hundreds and hundreds of messages from people. They were either people asking questions like, what happened? Like, blah, 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 blah. Do you know something? Like interviewing me. Sure. Uh, with women sharing their stories about mm. like, I also went through something like this. And then massive hate messages, all from men, all from men, yeah. like a, a tragic situation. And then men could only see it from a place of like, because when it happened, I wrote this whole long thing about like how we live in a system that creates these uh, monsters, essentially men who feel entitled to do whatever mm. they want with women's bodies or in general, like with right. people, but specifically with women's bodies. And I wrote this whole thing about like, you know, this patriarchal system creates uh, these monsters and then lets them run wild. Right. And, you know, it's really crazy because whenever you mention the patriarchy as a man, men like really get triggered, you know, right. because it's very like, what are you talking about? This is like feminism talk. It's like, right. yo, bro, like you, you need to stop for a second. But because like I, how I started at the beginning of this conversation, the, the system, the patriarchy system affects right. both men and women. Right. And like it's up to us together to dismantle these systems that have created, again, these like, and I think that's like pretty much where it all stems from. Like the violence, the sexual violence, the lack sure. of connection with your own emotions, the lack of self-awareness, the living from total reactivity. Right. And like, but again, like, having the space to as men kind of have these conversations mm -hmm. and like bring these topics up and then ask ourselves too, like how have I participated or perpetuated these systems in my life? Right. Either, either in my relationships through women or in my relationships to other men and like my power dynamic is the violence that is going through me. Like yeah. I don't have the answers for most of this, but these are questions that we got to be constantly checking right. ourselves on exploring and, 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 yeah. and trying to unlearn some of these things. But mm -hmm. and it, it's interesting. I have one more thing I want to touch on before that you get out of here. But in, as it pertains to this conversation, I think what you're talking about, all this hate that you got from men, it's a similar thing to what we hear from white people when the topic of white privilege comes up, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we as humans sort of begin to take these things as personal attacks on mm -hmm. us individually, our character as, you know, individual human beings. And we kind of end up being blissfully ignorant to the fact that we're not, you know, attacking you. We're talking about this system that was created mm -hmm. that then yeah. enabled this mindset that allows you to think the way that you're acting or the way others are acting is OK. And I think that that's an important distinction to make that when we talk mm -hmm. about these things, that it's, it's not a personal attack on men everywhere to bring up these things. You, know? you don't need to say not all men or all right. men matter or like it's like right. we're not. But if you're triggered, you better check yourself then. Yes. Like, why does this trigger you then? Like, right. why, if I'm speaking up for these things, why yeah. do you think that somehow I'm attacking you? Sure. Then what again, behavior are you trying like, to make an excuse for, essentially? <laughs> exactly. Like, what are you trying to justify? Or what are you defending? Like, what are right. you defending? Because otherwise, like in Puerto Rico, they say, like, el, el que le pica es porque he come. Something like that, I think, is what it means. It's like... If you feel triggered, it's like something inside you is getting right. moved. So you are like feeling um, um, like called out. You are sure. identifying with what we're talking about. And right. again, it's like it's up to all of us and also as men to make to normalize creating conversations and calling each other out from a loving place to help mm -hmm. each other grow and be right. like, yo, man, like, do you need to talk about something? Like yeah. it's it's very uncommon, but it's not impossible. And I think if we make it more and more like a uh, normal part of our dynamics sure. and like not just relate to men from like, you know, let's go have a beer, watch the game, talk like, right. but really like, yo man, are you going through something? Do we need to talk about it? 
Like you, you'd be surprised when someone is given permission to mm-hmm. be vulnerable. Like also when you show up in a vulnerable place, like people right. kind of feel safer to be like, you know what? Yeah, something has been going on with me. And right. I think the more and more we do that with our community, with our close friends, with our family, with our brothers, then slowly we can start doing like the work that's really ma- massive work that we're doing, but it's what's necessary. And really, it, we don't really have a choice anymore. We have to step it up, you know? No, absolutely. And the last thing I, I want to touch on also is this topic of like unhealthy crutches that many of us find and use, you know what I mean, for the pain that we're feeling. I mean, um, this last week we saw a uh, rapper DMX hospitalized over uh, a drug overdose and it's mm-hmm. something he struggled with forever, right? He's been in and out of mm-hmm. rehab and, and I mean, this is somebody mm-hmm. with all the success and money one could could hope for. So obviously mm-hmm. there's something deeper there. And, and I was talking to my, my girl about this and she brought up a great point where it was like, we immediately want to focus on the drug habit, right? The issue of them being mm-hmm. addicted to drugs. But that's really just a band-aid onto the greater issue of what caused this man to feel like he needed to keep going back to drugs. What was he hiding from? What was he running from? What pain was he trying to silence or diminish, you know what I mean? To And using drugs as a, a crutch for that. So, I mean, you know, can we talk a little bit about that or what you've seen or, or healthy? Yeah, I mean, putting the, putting the, like, it's like the treating the symptom, but not the disease. Right. You know, and like so many of us, like as it's so normalized in society, mm-hmm. the escapism, since mm-hmm. we're not taught to like, sit with the hard things in our life we're right it's natural for us to like escape into drugs or alcohol or sex or like m- entertainment like right to, of anything to avoid to avoid sitting and facing ourselves because of course it's scary like right. we're all messed up like of, of course who how could we not be like sure. and th- th- that's like coming to terms with like okay damn i got a lot going on uh, and, and accepting it as a step one is like mm-hmm. a step toward recovery. But mm-hmm. again, it's like, it's really hard for men in particular to like be able to open up that way. Absolutely. That's why it's important for us to kind of take it a, a little step or initiative, touch base with our people, touch mm-hmm. base with your men in your life. You sure. know, even if they're a little apprehensive, like touch base with them because like if they're lashing out in any kind of way, like there's definitely something that needs to be attended and unless we kind of like take the first step sometimes it's nearly impossible for most people to like do it on their own yeah we don't have we don't have to face it on our own now i think those are those are all all great points and great actionable steps you know what i mean as far as uh, it starts with the people in your in your life and your community and hopefully Mm -hmm. that spreads out to these sort of conversations and this sort of behavior being normalized as far as us as men being there for one another and being able to be vulnerable about, you know, what's going on in our lives. I think that's incredibly important. So, uh, Fernando, before you get out of here, though, I mean, anything you want to push people to? I mean, it's been a great conversation. Where else can they kind of check out all the, the work that you're doing? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, you can find me on my Instagram. It's Fernando Samalot. That's pretty much where I'm always sharing my writing and my photography. Um, and feel free to, like, contact me for anything. I'm really enjoying having these conversations lately. Mm-hmm. And the, here's the thing, too. Like, you don't need to be a specialist to sit about and have these conversations. Right. We can do this with anyone, you know, and like really starting and make it a common thing and normalize, like bringing up vulnerability, uh, our emotions and our lack of control of emotions, because that's like the first step forward. So I really thank you for kind of reaching out. And I hope that we can start and keep, keep this up. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I definitely, you know, anytime you need anything from me, I'm, I'm definitely down to have more of these conversations. They're, They're incredibly important. So, I appreciate you for hopping on, man. Yeah, man. Thank you for your time, too. Absolutely. Take care, brother. Okay, take care, man. Man, big thank you once again to my guest this week, Fernando Samalot. Uh, Just incredible information and important conversations to be having. Just some some food for thought. Uh, And I'm glad that we have a platform like this that we can be having these important conversations and also be looking at things from, from different angles. Now, before I get out of here, of course, I want to, to end on some positivity, and we'll do that in the form of a positive quote. This week's quote, man, it comes to us from my guy, Humble the Poet, an incredible author. I highly recommend both of his books. I mean, they've been just huge instruments and such things of importance to me on my own personal journey, so I definitely recommend you, you check out his books. The quote I pulled this week is, don't try to numb the pain that may just delay the healing. I'll say that one more time. Don't try to numb the pain 
that may just delay the healing. And this is so incredibly relevant to the conversation I was having with Fernando. Um, and it's this idea that most of us suppress the things that we have going on inside, the pain that we carry around, the hurt that we're carrying around, all those emotions, especially in the conversation when it comes to men, we don't let it out. We just try to bury it and we try to run from it and we try to use different things to distract ourselves from it. But the reality is those feelings, that pain, it doesn't go away unless you properly deal with it. It just builds up, builds up, it compounds, and it will come out at some point in time and it won't be in a healthy manner. So the best way to tackle these issues that we all face, you know, we all are battling some sort of demon, you have to face it head on. And whether that means being open and honest with those who are around you and finding a safe space to, to share your feelings or to seek out professional help. But either way, you can't expect to lead a, a healthy and happy life if you're sitting around holding on to all these negative emotions. That's just the facts. Now, with that said, thank you all so much for tuning into my show this week. <sighs> Always incredible to just feel that love and that support from you guys. So I really do appreciate it. Hope you love the new set as much as I do. I'll be back, of course, next week with another amazing show. Until then, stay safe. Talk to you soon. Bye.